So it's anti-bullying month. Um, it's bullying prevention month to raise awareness um, and to try to put a stop to it. So we also have bullying laws. To me, it's just really all been a bunch of crap. I mean, I don't even know the point because nothing ever really gets done. Um, so I'm going to talk about a few things. Um, a lot of this I'm, I'm talking about because it's something that recently happened. Um, so Macy was going to Southeast. And, you know, over time things happened. Um, one girl, she was sitting in her seat, and one girl elbowed her in the back of the head. Um, the little girl, nothing really happened to her. Um, there was one little girl sitting behind her and snipped her hair with a pair of scissors. Um, so a few things have happened, and, you know, it initially became a thing where she would just go to the office and tell, and then she got called a snitch for you know, telling on these kids. So, um, and nothing got done anyways. So I had told her, you know, Macy, if someone purposely puts their hands on you, you know, then you're, you're allowed to hit them back. Like, that's it. I'm sorry if anybody disagrees with that, but when you've told so many times and nothing gets done and then kids think that they can treat you however they want to treat you because you're not going to do anything, like, I'm sorry, but it needs to stop somewhere. So, um, I got a call. It was it was about this time last year, uh, and it was on a Monday. And um, I got a call from Macy. She was in the gym. It was before they had went to to their class or whatever that morning. And I could hear a bunch of yelling and going, you know, going on and everything. And um, she was explaining to me what had happened. So there was an issue over social media over the weekend. Um, she wasn't with me at the time, so she had stayed the night with a friend. And it followed them to school that morning, pretty much. So she's walking, her and her little friend are walking out of the bathroom, and two little girls were behind them. And we're calling them names. Um, and one of the little girls actually ended up pushing them. So the assistant principal seen it. He called the girl in there. But the other little girl was still allowed to go back to the gym. So little girls at that age, what do they do? They go to their friends and they tell them everything that just happened and, and add whatever else they want in there. So that was the time that Macy had called me and I told her. You know, you could hear everybody yelling or whatever, and I'm like, Macy, I want you to go to the office, and I want you to sit. I was at a doctor's appointment, so I wanted her to wait. So, um, I then, I actually called the office, too, and let them know that, you know, I wanted Macy in the office. Um, come to find out, Macy tried to tell the teacher that she needed to go to the office. I told her to, and there was an emergency and um, the teacher told her that you know she had to go by herself the other, her and her friend couldn't go together so Macy went and sat back down um, so I get a call later and I went and picked Macy up after my appointment um, ba basically what had happened was um, one of the little girls like one of there's one little girl that's you know friends with the girl that went back to the gym and there was, was like a little cluster of them and she was pushed Macy was pushed and she turns around and she asked this little girl did you push me there's been all different types of stories I'm not really sure why Macy would push someone if they said no like why she would push them back if they said no like that doesn't make any sense I don't know if the little girl did say yes because she just wanted to seem tough. Like, I don't know. So, what does Macy do? Macy pushes her back. After that, um, you know, the little girl pushes her again. And she's, Macy's um, between, at this point, she fell between the bleachers. So, she can't really move. She's kind of stuck. And this little girl gets on her. 
and just starts beating her in the head continuously beating her in the head uh, it didn't take long and Macy had blacked out but the little girl continued to beat her in the head um, and I don't know if you know but technically teachers aren't allowed to pull students off um, they have to wait for an officer to show up a teacher did get involved and I do appreciate that because you know had they have waited on an officer to come I know that that little girl had no self-control so she would have continued to beat Macy in the head even though she seen that she was blacked out and there's no telling what could have ended up happening to her um, so Macy gets punished same as the other little girl they get the exact same punishment um, and whatever so they ended up having to do mediation too um, and they were told not to you know get on social media and talk about anything that had happened um, which that didn't work because the little girl still did so um, also either it was that evening or the evening after the fight I had got a call and I ended up recording it from my phone because someone had let me know that the little girl that left the gym and went back and was talking to her friends posted a snapchat um, she was saying that she was actually the one that had pushed Macy in the beginning and Macy fell and she hit her head and it was funny and um, you know saying how much she hated her and you know that Macy was a bitch and just all this stuff and then at the end she says that um, somebody should kill her and then she goes on to say actually I'll kill her if you want me to so I have this and I turn this in nothing was done nothing like and I haven't I mean I haven't heard anything that got done so um, then there was like other post and stuff and then there was um, the little girl that beat her in the head walked into the cafeteria one day and people started to stand up and clap for her when I found that out and I, I did find out that was in fact true from the staff um, like it just it hurt my heart so bad because you know Macy wasn't there that day and I'm so glad she had missed you know about two weeks of school because of everything that was going on she was afraid to go to school but especially all the stuff that she was getting on social media like you know people were posting all kinds of stuff about her and saying mean hateful things about her and you know I ended up having to just take social media away because she was already in a hole and it was just getting darker and darker for her um, you know I think that social media has gone way too far I think that you know parents don't monitor like they should and you know I've even tried to talk to parents about problems that have took place and nothing really nothing ever really gets done either parents go crazy on me or or sometimes they do understand you know I had there was um, like after the fact there was like some music leads going around that a couple girls had done and just being mean and you know some parents handled it well and and that's awesome like that's the way that it should be but then there were some parents that you know one even said that her her daughter's musically must have been hacked so let me tell you musically you can't put a video like it it was the person like that girl her daughter was the one doing it that's not hacked like you can't hack a person <laughs> so you know there's there's so many people that are so blind to everything that goes on and they want to take up for their kid and they you know and I, I, I get it like I want to take up for Macy too but when she's in the wrong she's in the wrong and I'm gonna let her know she's in the wrong um, that's part of parenting you think that they can they think that they can just get away with whatever they're gonna continue to do it that's what they do 
So, um, you know, all of it still kept coming in. I tried to handle it the best way I could. You know, parents get mad if you don't contact them. Parents get mad if you do contact them. Like, I mean, you just can't win. But I can only do what I feel in my heart I need to do and try to get it handled. But nothing ever really does get handled. So, um, just last Saturday, we, you know, we were out at the soccer field. A little girl that was also one of the ones that was saying ugly things to her on social media last year. Um, she was playing, she was on the other, other team and they've already played them once before and, uh, there's a fly in here. And, um, so they played them once before and everything was fine. There was a couple things that happened and I tried to contact the parent about it and once again it was just brushed off because sometimes that's what parents do and that's why kids behave the way that they do. But anyways, so um, they're playing, you know, and our, our team had zero subs and the other team had about four subs or so and just meaning that like our team didn't have anybody to go in. They couldn't take breaks. So there was a few times that her and this other little girl had came in contact with one another, you know, playing the ball. Well, right before the big episode, um, Macy had kicked the ball from her. And there's a little bit of pushing going on, but not like with the hands because that's part of soccer. You can't be pushing with your hands. So um, you just have to kind of use your body to get to the ball sort of thing. Um, so Macy kicks the ball away. And the little girl, like you can, I was like, oh my gosh, she's so mad. Like, you know, she walks away and she's shaking her head and rolling her eyes and um, popping her knuckles. And um, then, um, I'm just, I, I don't know. It was like I almost seen something coming, but I'm like, eh, I'll just give it the benefit of the doubt. Don't ever give it the benefit of the doubt. So if you feel something, you need to go with it. So Macy goes after the ball again. This time, she's pushed, like pushed with her hand to the ground. And the little girl had got on top of her. Like there was a bunch of falling and all this. And then the little girl got on top of her. And, um, and Macy pushed her off. Okay, so after that happened, um, the little girl got on, like pushed her down again and got on top of her. So Macy had no other choice but to start hitting back. Um, when I had finally got up there, you know, people started to pull the little girl off and she's kicking and screaming and, you know, there was actually one point where she had told Macy to just go kill herself. You know, if I would have done this like a year ago, I would be bawling my eyeballs out. But I know that, like me, myself, and, and Macy have come out of this so much stronger. But it's still not right. So, we, um, you know, we get a call. Macy can't play her, her last soccer game this Saturday. Um, she contact, or, you know, my husband actually contacted, um, Brent Lewis, he's like the soccer director or whatever. Um, the ref told the sheriff that he didn't see anything, but Brent is going, Brent didn't see anything either. Um, Brent is, you know, saying that Macy can't play. He, the only thing he has to go on is the ref statement, which I don't get that because the ref didn't see anything. You got other parents that witnessed the same thing that I witnessed. Um, so, Ronnie tried to contact someone else. They were on vacation or something. So um, the mayor, um, Carla Strickland, calls him. The first thing she says is, you're not gonna like what I have to say. And then goes on to tell him that it's, a, it's bad parenting pretty much. Um, it's a parenting issue. So anybody that knows, like really knows me, knows that my kids get punished if they do something wrong they get punished and if if there's a parent that has a problem with my kid or whatever I have told so many parents if there's ever an issue then you come to me I'm gonna make sure I find out like exactly what started it how it ended everything because that's just how I am I don't care if I have to jump through loops like 
that's what I do. <laughs> and that's what every parent should do. It's not, it's not supposed to be an easy job. But we got another call. So there was other parents that contacted the mayor. Both Brent and the mayor said that um, they don't get paid to do this. They're volunteers. Guess what? You know, things are gonna happen in life and you're gonna have to deal with them whether you get paid or not. You know, the whole prevention, bullying prevention, the best way to prevent it is for people that are up there to speak against it. Like, they, sh they could be the ones that actually do something. I mean, even the principal of the school last year could have done something, could have really done something. Could have really made a difference and proved to the kids that bully that it's not right and it shouldn't be tolerated. Exactly what Carla and Brent could be doing, but they don't. They're not doing the right thing. They're not seeing the whole the whole picture and now they're just kind of set now, like that's that's what they want to do and they're not changing their mind and that's totally fine. Totally fine. But to me, if you have the privilege to stand up for the right thing, if you have the privilege to be a voice and to make a difference, then that's what you should do. You know, I know that Macy is not a perfect kid. I get it. Like, but she's she's really a sweet sweet child like she's got a heart of gold she can't stand her siblings and her her biggest problem is she's too honest and she doesn't have a filter that's her her biggest flaw which right now it's a flaw but later in life when she gets older it's gonna be the it's going to be one of her better qualities. That fly is still in here. <laughs> so, right now, it's it, it's hurting her. But, she's that kid that, if we go somewhere, you know, there can be a woman with no teeth. And Macy's like, I love your hair. You're so pretty. Like, serious. And I'm like, Macy, why do you do that? I don't know, I just want them to feel good. Like, that's what she says. I just want them to feel good. Have you know that when um, <clears throat> she, when she was beaten in the head, she was in her room crying one night. And she was praying. This was, the, I think, the same night that she was beaten in the head. And she was praying for these little girls. She was praying because she knows that I've told her that if there's ever an issue with somebody, and a lot of times people are me mean because something's going on at home. And then I just tell her to try to ignore things, whatever. So she's in her room praying and she's, I hear her praying for these little girls, that Lord, whatever is going on in their life, that you you just help them and you help heal their heart and, and not be so mad and not be so mean, okay? After all that, like, that she had went through, and this is when I get choked up because I feel like those little girls kind of took this from her. Like, they, these mean little girls have taken, taken that from her. It's like the more things that happen, the tougher she gets. And it's good, but it's bad. Because she's that little girl that when she's sitting at a lunch table and she sees there's one little girl that you know, people have been mean to and sitting by herself. She goes and sits with them. She invites them to come to the table. She's that kid. And I don't want her to ever feel like she doesn't ha she shouldn't be that kid because she's gonna be looked down upon or people are gonna talk about her. Or I get it, like, I understand. There's, there's popularity, there's not popular, I get it, okay, so. But some, at some point, somebody needs to make a difference. And when you have a 14 year old doing the right thing and you have adults not doing the right thing, it just shows you how bad this world is. When you have parents, you know, even saying that she deserved what she got, 
you're the problem. To say that a child that was beaten the head is right, you're part of the problem. You're the reason that your child is the way that she is because you think that she's innocent. Like kids are mean. Macy has been mean. She has been mean. And when I find out that she is mean, guess what? Um, I get a little crazy on her. So let me just tell you, she's not perfect, but she does not deserve anything that has came to her. Nothing. And for a parent to say that, you are so wrong. So let me tell you too, when you have an issue like the little girl, I'm going to tell you this, the little girl that um, followed her out of the bathroom, the little girl that went to the cafeteria and was running, or the gymnasium and was running her mouth, the little girl that kept posting stuff on social media, the same little girl that got on Snapchat and was threatening to kill her and everything else. Let me tell you, that same little girl is the one that went social media famous or whatever for burning her own dog, okay? So when you let your kids do whatever they want and there's Snapchats of them getting into your liquor cabinet and there is Instagram, like them getting on Instagram live or whatever and they're in like, I mean 12 o'clock at night and they're in a little bra and they're cussing and carrying on. Parents, monitor your kids. Like this is not okay. They are 14 years old, not 22, all right? I'm tired of dealing with it. I'm so tired of dealing with it. I'm so drained, but I'm all that my kid has. And if I have to continue to talk about it, and if I have to continue to be that crazy mom that is always on everything, then that's what I have to do. Because no one should ever see their kid have to hurt the way that she was hurting. No one should ever have to feel what you feel when you see your kid like that. And no one should, no kid should ever have to feel that way either. They shouldn't feel like they want to die. You know, there's one little kid actually, um, when she sat down, the little girl told her to go drink bleach. You know? You know, she was one that she'd come home and she's like, I just want to die. Why can't the Lord just come back, Mom? Like, I would never do it because I don't want to go to hell, but why can't he just come back? As a parent, those words are the most hurtful, heart-stinging words that could ever come out of your kid's mouth. So parents, watch your kids, monitor their stuff, take their phone at a certain time, Put stuff on their phone to know what they're on, when they're on it. Set time limits. We've got time limits. Um, people that are higher up that can actually do something, do something. Stop talking about it. Stop, you know, showing up to places and being like, you know, it's anti-bullying month. We want to talk. No, don't talk about it. Do something. That's what matters. That's what makes a difference. I'm so like tired of seeing all these things where kids are being bullied and kids are being mistreated and nothing really gets done. It starts with parents. But when parents aren't handling it, other people can. And that's what needs to be done. So, this is it. I want to make sure everybody in Pleasant Garden knows that this is the kind of mayor that you have. She doesn't get she doesn't get paid. So, don't take, don't be calling her and taking up her time. Um, this is the kind of director that we have, Brent Lewis, you know, not standing up for what is right. So all you people in Pleasant Garden, just know that this, if your kid ever has an issue like this, the best thing for them to do is to not defend themselves, for them to just lay there and get beat in the head. I mean, that's the only way that that they'll be able to play in their last soccer game. I mean, if they're not laying in the hospital bed unconscious, but... Or... This. Actually, no, I'm not even giving give that advice. So... Work with your kids. 
get in their life, know what they're doing, stop being their friend, be their friend, but be their parent first. Tell them when they're wrong. Punish, punish them when they do something wrong. That's all I got to say, y'all. Have a good day.